Hey guys, welcome to this unboxing of a Necron Convergence of Dominion. Um, Santa was very uh, good to me, and uh, here it is. <laughs> so let's get the cellophane wrap off and let's have a look. Okay, so cellophane's off. I'm pretty excited about this. I think they're interesting. They're the Necron Terrain piece. Um, there's three of them, like sort of stalag tights, tight sport. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the idea of them is that you can sort of hold backfield objectives and they also have some funky sort of necron -y goodness. So let's have a look at the sprues and um, then I'm going to build them up, which I'll be doing on one of my uh, live shows uh, later on. And then we'll talk about the uh, uses of them in the game. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's see what we get. So... There we go. So we have the sheet, as you'd expect. Uh, three Necron Convergence of Dominions statuette things. So yeah, they're pretty interesting. Um, I'm also keen to sort of like see the Blackstone sort of aspects in the room. Two sprues. And there we go. They're pretty cool, aren't they? With all the uh, sort of iconography and all the sort of like. I don't know, you could have like sort of Necron binary code on them, things like that. So, yeah, they're pretty cool. They're also pretty big, to be fair, them. Um, if I get a sort of ruler out, yeah, they're standing at sort of six inches high, the board. So, yeah, there's two of them there. Various levels of this sort of like blackstone thing is broken away from them, which is pretty cool. Um, the sprues are identical by the look of them, so it'd be the bases and things like that. So, yeah, cool models. Just something totally different as well, aren't they? They're, they're sort of like, I think that these are very overlooked and I think that they would be quite useful uh, for sort of like my Legion and things like that. So I'm gonna get them built up and then we'll uh, have a look at the built models and talk about the sort of uses of them in game. And there we go, that's them all built up. So three obelisks, they're all about six inches tall. Uh, you can see the, the detail in them is absolutely incredible. Um, now I built these up on a live stream just for a bit of fun. Uh, well, they will continue as part of this video. So they've got the, uh, the the bits that we sort of know and love in the Necrons now really are they like the glowing aspects inside things. You've got all of the iconography down the side and then the machine that's sort of hidden underneath. Um, went together really easily. I've just sort of like gone around the edges. You've got one that's like fully black stoned up, a partial one, which is pretty pretty cool. Like it's sort of starting to crack away around the sides and then our almost fully uncovered one with the what is it <laughs> what is it underneath the machine so yeah it should be cool looking forward to painting them up so that's the them built they're all about six inches high and there's three of them so quite a, a substantial amount of plastic in the box so to speak but i think it'd be really interesting now guys to talk about what uses are there on the tabletop? How am I going to use them, and what we think about them? So let's uh, let's break out our trusty Necron Codex. Okay, so the convergence of Dominion. Let's have a look. So they're 120 points for three, and they're the fortification choice. Um, six power. We've played power. That's fair enough. Um, some of these model characteristics change. So they've got a change in stat line. They start with 10 wounds, a toughness eight, and have a three-up save. Now. That's 30 toughness eight, three plus save wounds, which are Necron. So you can leave, my plan here is to leave these on the baseline objectives as spread out as far as they can be. And they are, it's just an extra thing the enemy's gonna have to deal with and shift, okay? Um, Blister skill three plus, cause they have a trans-dimensional abductor, which is pretty, pretty brutal sounding, isn't it? Uh, range 12, assault D3. Strength 4, yeah, okay, not great, but it's still there, isn't it? Strength 4, minus 3 AP, damage 3. Damage 3, minus 3 AP. That is pretty brutal. The strength's not great, but that is going to do some work for you. Living Metal as well, now that's important. So that means that each wound, each turn, um, if they've taken a wound, they'll gain a wound back up to their maximum threshold. That is really, really good. I can't tell you how good that is and how hard these things are going to be to shift. Um, 
They've also got command protocols, so you can use them as part of your, your deck of command protocols. Bear in mind as well, you take Zarkam, stack the deck, no, stack the deck, <laughs> stack the deck with two of the card that doubles up on the living metal things, and your enemy's got a really tough job on shifting these off objectives. When this unit is first set up on the battlefield, its models do not have to be set up in unit coherency. Instead, each model must be set up wholly within 12 inches of one other model from the unit. From that point on, each model is treated as a separate unit. So you can get, what, a two foot board coverage out. Now, majority of times, if you've got a home field objective, you could at least leave one of these on it and have the others 12 inch forward, or as far forward as you can, because you have a Dominion Protocol Aura. While a friendly Dynasty Core unit is within six, this model, Add two to its leadership characteristic. Warriors, wow. I mean, yeah, we've got leadership 12. That's pretty good, isn't it? Let's be honest with you, you ain't losing any worries whatsoever with this. Um, it's also a command node. So while a command protocol is active for your army, friendly units with command protocol's ability that are in six of this model benefit from the selected directive of an active command protocol. So it steps in where if you don't have enough characters to spread out to give the command protocols to all of your units, but they're near a, one of the, the star stells or whatever they're called, it means you've got more of a bubble. So you've got some serious sort of spread out here. You can do them 12 inches apart. My idea is you had one at the back and then two relatively further forward and you've got a real sort of area of command protocols for big blobs of Necro Warriors, which is how I like to play, as we know. Um, so you've also got translocation protocols. While there are any star style units from your army in the battlefield, a cryptic unit can attempt the following action. Activate translocation protocols. At the end of your movement phase, one friendly cryptic unit from your army that is in three of any star style unit can start to perform this action. This action is complete at the end of your turn. So it starts in your movement phase and it's ended at the same turn. End of that turn, the action's done. Once completed, select one of the star cell units and remove it from the battlefield. In the reinforcement steps of your next movement phase, set that star cell unit back on the battlefield anywhere more than nine inches away from enemy models. That's brilliant. Okay, so you can basically have a cryptech stood around that perhaps you've got a technomancer or something like that, or a cryptech that's not doing a great deal can just say, right, actually, I'm going to take this star style, I'm going to take it off the board, and then I'm going to put it nine inches away from the enemy at the beginning of my next turn. If you coincide that with a Veil of Darkness jump as well, you're moving some serious hard stuff for the enemy to deal with, potentially right into their, their field, if that makes sense. I think there's a real use for these. They've been overlooked because the gun's not amazing. But I think if you can sort of fire these up the board and also sort of pin back your home objectives. I think these are going to be really good for 120 points. I can't see sort of any any sort of real downsides to that. It'll be interesting. They're also a vehicle and a building. So, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, to see what uses they're going to have. They're completely different to everything else from in the army. Um, they are literally a piece of terrain. <laughs> but... Yeah, I just think that they're going to be really useful for my playstyle. I like the warrior blobs. I like the home field. Gosh, blobs are warriors while reaper warriors go forward. And you've got to think, if you're sending warriors forward in ghost arcs and then you suddenly can bomb one of these next to support them, it just means that the enemy is going to have these areas of the battlefield where they've got a lot of hard-to-shift models and wounds to deal with. And you're really solid going to go for board control. So I'm really interested to see how these play out, how they work, and what uses we can get out of them. So, yeah, that's the uh, the convergence of Dominion. Very different, very cool. And I'm looking forward to painting them up and seeing what we can do with them. So they're going to be Blackstone mine, and I'm going to do a video on how to paint, how I paint Necron Blackstone. So thanks for watching, guys, as always. I do really appreciate your support. Um, please let me know what do you think about these what do you think is going to be the usage of these does anyone have them already and has actually managed to have a game this year and, and <laughs> can tell us uh, what uses there are for them let us know let us know in the comments um, Jip will be on the receiving end of these um, as with all things Necron <laughs> when, when we can get gaming again so thanks for watching as always please like comment and subscribe it does mean an awful lot to me the bigger the community gets the more we can push forward and the more we can do together so thank you for your time as always 
keep well wherever you are in the world and happy hobbying.